What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggle's TV Daily Rewind is where we go back a week, give you seven days of the past tech news and in one single video, guys. So with this week, tons of information came out about the Google Pixel Fold and the whole Google I.O. event in general. New Galaxy Watch 2. We talk about the Galaxy Z Fold 5, Flip 5, S23 phones and so much more. So enjoy this week and we'll see you in the next one. First story of the day has to do with the Pixel line, Pixel 7a and 8a to be exact. Now the Pixel 7a has been leaked out. We know what it's going to look like. We know the specs it's going to have. We know the price at $499. But what about the Pixel 8a? Are they gonna continue doing this line? Because the Pixel 7a is really similar to just a plain old Pixel 7. Well, the latest information from Yogesh Bra is saying that the Pixel A series seems to be coming to an end. With the spec and price bump on the Pixel 7a, it is certain that there won't be any 8a coming. Google will likely stick with vanilla and pro models alongside a foldable going forward. Something similar might happen with Samsung. So kind of interesting there that even though the Pixel 6a had really good fanfare, 7a most likely also will have really good fanfare. Seemingly, they're getting rid of the A series and just going with the regular, you know, 8 and 8 Pro and 7 and 7 Pro, things like that. They're not going to have this kind of budget mid-tier type phone. They'll leave that to just the plain old, whatever the number is, a 7, 8, 9 phone. Uh, so kind of interesting. What do you guys think? How do you feel about that? Is it bother you or not? Next up is a actually bit of good news, I guess you could say, having to do with the Galaxy Z line and i don't i, I want to preface before we even get into the article because it's from a korean uh website i don't know if this is just the flip five and the fold five or just the flip five i don't know if it's one or the other it sounds like it might only be the flip five but that to me sounds a little bit weird so i actually think it's going to end up being both phones but we've heard that the, the the flip and fold or flip or fold are going to potentially come out in july we've also heard recently that it's not it's going to uh, be announced at the end of july and then be released you know most likely two weeks later after that well the latest information coming out of korea is that samsung electronics performance deterioration and this is translated so if it doesn't make sense that's why breakthrough is the release of the z5 accelerated they put a question mark but they go into detail in one of the paragraphs saying that according to the industry on the first, Samsung Electronics is coordinating plans to advance the release schedule of the Fold 5 or Flip 5, whatever it says, Z5, by about a month. There are observations that the product will be released and sales will begin in the last week of July. This is really interesting to me because I guess what they could do is they literally could announce the phone in July and put it on sale the same day, not even have a, a, a waiting period of a week or two to get it released. They could just announce it. It's in stores that very day that they announce it. Um, if you order it through Samsung, obviously you'd have to wait for it to ship out. That wouldn't surprise me one bit at all. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on this story, but there's a chance that these Flip 5 and Fold 5 or just the Flip 5 will end up being released in the very last week of July, which really would make it a full month ahead of release. What do you story of the day is if you remember the Galaxy Z Flip 5 will have that folder outside looking display on the back of that phone. And you might want to know what it's going to kind of look like in video form like when the screen's off and when it turns on and how that whole thing will be. Well, this is coming from Sam Mobile. They got a little video render created showing off exactly what it will look like. And in the article, they talk about people complaining about the look about it, not liking it. I can't see, I mean, I can understand why somebody might not like it because it looks like a folder, but why wouldn't, it just looks pretty cool. I think it looks really interesting. So I'm excited for that. Even though I'm not a huge flip phone fan, that could make me a flip phone fan, that outside display. We'll, we'll see though. I, I'll definitely want to try it out and, and see how it, how it goes with it. But yeah, I thought it was an interesting look at you know how it will interact when you do look at it and if the the screen being black if it's going to hide that when it's off obviously if you have the uh like a different colored phone of that you're going to see it a little bit more than maybe a, against a black phone but still it's going to be kind of hidden so what do you guys think does that kind of bother you or not do you like that design let me know in the comments down 
below. Next up is all about the Galaxy S24, 24 Plus, and 24 Ultra. And we've kind of spoken about this, but I wanted to go in a little bit more detail about it in terms of if the phone will physically change from looking like a Galaxy S23, 23 Plus, and 23 Ultra. Here's my 23 Ultra. Well, I guess yes and no as of right now, the information that's coming out. So the leaking rumor is coming from Ravengus, and he is saying that the S24 and 24 Plus will keep the same design as their predecessors. And then someone says, well, what about the S24 Ultra? And he says, <laughs> here's the three potential concepts being worked on. And they, the first one, none of them look exactly the same as the S, at least the back doesn't, as the S23 Ultra, but they're all quite similar in scope. Um, my favorite out of those is either the first or the second one. The third one, the one all the way over to the right. Yeah, I don't hate it, but definitely doesn't blow me away. Um, but ultimately, if it looks like that, it's pretty much the same design as an S23 Ultra because of the fact that you're not going to get that extra, you know, lens back there sensor. And then beyond that, you know, it's going to look exactly the same pretty much on the front. I don't think they're going to use an under display camera still. So we're looking at the same design again, even for the S24 Ultra pretty much versus the S23 Ultra. Our first story of the day, as you knew, Google I.O. was just around the corner. It's about a, ooh, less than a week away at this point. And what are they going to announce in terms of hardware? They're going to announce a lot of things, actually. And here's the list of things that they will be announcing. So Pixel 7a, which is going to come out for 499 bucks. It's a successor to the Pixel 6a, but in a lot of ways matches the Pixel 7. Pixel Fold is coming out. That's going to be their first foldable phone ever, and it should launch at about $1,700 or $1,799. Bucks. Very, very excited about that one. Pixel Tablet is going to be a, I believe it's a 10-inch tablet, and it goes into a dock, which gives it the ability to charge and give it really, really good sound and make it act as a smart display as well. So it's kind of a multi-functioned thing. Pixel Buds A-Series Buds. These are their wireless buds and they're gonna come in new bluish color. And then finally, they're gonna do a little teaser on the Pixel 8 series. I do the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro, which the Pixel 8 should have that new Tensor G3 processor. And I think we're gonna see a really nice little bump in terms of performance on that G3 processor from Google coming out right there. So out of those products, which one are you most excited for? I'll put them in order real quick. Mine are the Pixel Fold, and then the Pixel Tablet, the Pixel 8 series, Pixel 7a, and then the Pixel Buds A. Um, I, I'd probably put the Pixel 8 series higher up on the board, but it's not coming out until October, so we're still months away. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Next up is about a really, really cool device that's gonna eventually come out most likely for Samsung. We've talked about their folding phones. They have their folding phone now, the Galaxy Z Fold line, and it's uh, one hinge. But they're soon gonna be coming out with a tri-folding phone, and this is gonna have two hinges, so you have double the chance to break your phone. That, that, that's a joke right there, but the two hinges is not a joke. Check this out, so some new, Applicants, they, they filed new patents on here, have been rung out. And the first one, we're gonna, the first you know, image we're gonna look at shows that it is a dual hinged foldable smartphone with three distinct panel display areas. And I, this is, I'll be honest, I, I, I do think this is really cool, but at the same time, it's a bit too much. I don't know why I would need it to fold three times and have three separate displays. And I, I just can't imagine how amazing this is gonna be. Okay, you know, you have three image uh, display segments. Okay, I can see running full different apps on three, you know, the three sections right there. That'd be kind of cool, especially if it's enough to, to look at and consume. And I can see the zigzag thing. Okay, it stands up. I can see that kind of being a cool thing, but like, Eh, I don't know. Um, it's also going to have a bunch of sensors built into it um, to let it interact with you and itself in different ways. It, it's really a super interesting device. But again, I, I personally, even though I haven't played with it or seen it in real life, find it to be a little overkill. It just seems like too much. Too much is going on there. I can't. 
I don't know. Well, I'll wait. I'll wait until I like beat that thing down. But right now it's a little bit crazy. And I want to know the story of the day is about the one plus Fold, it is coming out very, very soon. And the latest information is that the OnePlus foldable phone will be launching in August. So just a mere, what, three months away, the OnePlus Fold will be coming out. I'm looking forward to this. I, I expect them to put an 8 Gen 2 in there, which is gonna happen before the Galaxy Z Fold. No, actually, no, it'll be after, won't it? It will be after. It's going to be around the same time at the very least. Um, but I expect it. I, I don't. I don't think this is going to be like two thousand dollar phone or an eighteen hundred dollar phone. I think they're going to get this down to fifteen hundred dollars or less. So if you're, you know, looking to get a foldable phone, maybe keep your eyes on this one as well because usually they price their phones pretty reasonably. Um, sometimes they'll. Uh, not make the cameras as great or they'll not have wireless charging or they won't have um, water resistance or things like that things that you might not even care about so keep your eyes peeled on this one i do expect the oneplus fold to be fairly reasonably priced as you know the galaxy z flip 5 is going to be going through a change of sorts on that outside display it's getting bigger and what does it look like compared to a Galaxy Z Flip 4? I've mean, kind of seen what it's gonna look like, but really side by side, it's a pretty massive, massive difference here. Um, the other thing that they're gonna have on there is a bunch of new features built into that bigger display. I don't know specifically exactly what, obviously we can hypothesize about it, but it's such a huge, massive difference and it's very attractive for it. So I'm looking forward to this Z Flip 5 versus Z Flip 4 even, or any of the other Z Flips. It looks so much better now with that big, big display on the back of the phone. Guys, dun, da, da, da. as you can see from the headline, official tweet has gone out with a video of the Google Pixel Fold phone. Google has, even before May 10th has arrived, they're putting out this video showing it in all of its glory and basically every orientation from it completely open where you can, can't can see any crease really on the display. They show the hinge. It looks kind of thick, but I'm into thickness. Who doesn't like something thick? Uh, they show it closed, they show it open, they show the back, they show the sides, they show every bit of this phone. And this is supposed to remember be about 1700, 1799 bucks. I mean, if they put up the pre-order right now, I'd dive right in. I think. I, I think a lot of people still would. It'd probably maybe not just as many as, as if they uh, did the show at Google I.O. and did it, but expect this to go, definitely go on, on, on pre-order May 10th, which is next week. Man, I'm really, really looking forward to this. So much so. I've been waiting for a Pixel Fold for a couple of years now, maybe three years. I'd have to really go back to my videos and check it out. Um, there's not a lot to take from this that we haven't already said, but it's exciting stuff. So story of the day is about the Galaxy Z Flip 5. As you know, the back of that phone is gonna have this big giant 3.4 inch display. And we're gonna see our first case to see exactly what it's going to look like. And I thought this would be pretty interesting to show off. Ice Universe goes on to say, say exclusive Z Flip 5 protective case has leaked, confirming its unique folder screen design. When you look at this, picture you can see obviously the camera cutout you can also see uh, the unique folder cutout on the back of that display um, this is going to create two things not so much the folder design but that big display on the back they're gonna that's gonna be a whole new place for people to get screen protectors have them be uh, the, the 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 film protector kind or glass protector kind but regardless you're probably gonna want something on the back of there you're definitely gonna want a really good case at the very least to protect that. That case looks pretty good. I can't really tell too much, but it looks kind of thick that it would protect it, but kind of unique look for that overall. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. If you watched my video yesterday, we had a huge, huge announcement from Google, not only announcing, but actually showing off in video form their new unreleased, but soon to be announced and released, Google Pixel Fold. Now, Google Pixel Fold will be announced on May 10th, released most likely on June 27th, coming in at about 1700 or 1799 bucks. And 
If you go to Google's website, they actually linked me this and that's how I found it. But ultimately when you go to their website, the first foldable phone engineered by Google, keep me up to date about devices, news, tips, and offers from the Google store, including the new Pixel Fold. So you can sign up for updates and tips and offers and things like that. Not only from the Google store, but they'll also tell you about the Google Pixel Fold. So I wanted to include that. I wouldn't say this is necessarily a pre pre-order like Samsung does with their phones. Um, but this is basically, it, by signing up here, if you forget, you don't watch the news or whatever, this is going to allow you to know like when it's up for pre-order, um, if you know tips and tricks, things like that. So not a bad newsletter to sign up for, for your Google Pixel Fold needs, especially your question. I have a pretty big story about here. This is about the Pixel 8 launch, which is going to happen in October. And if you remember, the Google Pixel Watch launched what was it early this year i guess it was 2023 and 2023 isn't even over and we're going to be getting another watch in less than a year pixel watch 2 is due to launch during the pixel 8 launch that's the exclusive that's coming from nine to five google is that they're planning to launch the pixel watch 2 with the pixel eight and john proser who's also a big leaker in the community has confirmed as he's been working on a story in the background. And as far as he knows, Google is planning two watches for later this fall, Pixel Watch 2, which will launch with the Pixel 8, and a second version for kids, though that more than likely will be branded as a Fitbit watch. But what could we possibly see in terms of a Pixel Watch 2? I think some of the easy, most recognizable things are a bigger watch face, bigger, because the, the Pixel Watch 1 was pretty small. I didn't mind it though, I have to be honest with you, I liked it. I liked that it was small. It was um, not hard to use. It was, it was very fluid. You only got one day of battery life, so better battery life, a, a newer processor, because it had used a really, really old processor. More RAM, better processor, better battery life, bigger screen. Um, those are definitely four things you're most likely going to see right off the bat from this thing. I, you know, you, you got to imagine. And then beyond that, obviously maybe some kind of feature that's not in the Pixel Watch, but, but beyond that, that's probably what we're looking at for the Pixel Watch 2. Next up, Google Pixel Fold versus Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Now, I've already done my own comparison of these in terms of specs comparison, but what about features comparison? And I might actually probably end up doing a video on this and what we're potentially will see. It might be in the future, it might be just what we hypothesize right now, but Holly put out a tweet saying, uh, which one are you picking? And honestly, if I had to pick, I would personally choose the Pixel Fold as of right now over the uh, Galaxy Z Fold 5. And then Max Weinbeck put Pixel Fold, Pixel exclusive features when not hacked onto a phone are greater than the Samsung exclusive features. And I kind of wanted to talk about what Max wrote more so, but I'll answer real quick why I would want the Pixel Fold more. Just more because it's a new product, haven't tried it, different form factor. Very excited to try the Pixel software on a huge foldable display. That's really why. But when you break down exclusive features uh, real quickly of what Google offers versus what Samsung offers, I think for me, I would probably choose the Samsung ones. I really like all the customization things they have in the Google, the Samsung Good, Good Lock software. That's really cool stuff. I love all of that. And then also just the way that they consistently add features. And then sometimes Android, you know, the main versions of Android, vanilla Android, steal some of those or copy those features that Samsung already had working on Samsung Galaxy features. So I'd probably choose the Samsung Galaxy ones over the exclusive Pixel ones. First story of the day is a leak. The Google Pixel tablet leaked on Amazon's site over in Japan, and it leaked out the release date, the price, and things like that. So we're gonna look at this. This is coming straight from Win Futures website. I'll link it down below if you wanna read the whole article, but just pulling the 
important stuff here, the summary. So you're gonna see the Google Pixel tablet previewed on Amazon Japan. 10.95 inch LCD, not OLED, LCD display with 2560 by 1600, 500 nits of brightness. It'll have that Google Tensor G2 processor, eight gigs of RAM, 128 uh, or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. It'll have that front eight megapixel and rear eight megapixel cameras. Four speakers, also known as quad speakers, so that's quite nice. Wi-Fi 6E, doesn't have Wi-Fi 7, but hey, Wi-Fi 6E is just as fast, uh, or fast enough, I should say. Bluetooth 5.2, ultra wide band, Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 1, rear pogo pin so you can connect it to the dock. Supply dock as a smart home center, like we mentioned, you'll be able to put that tablet into a dock and it turns into a smart home center. 27 watt hour battery so you can get up to 12 hours of battery life. Japanese price is 80,000 yen, which in American dollars equates out to $599 for the 128 and for the 256, you're looking at $649. And June 20th should be the release date for that Google Pixel tablet. So it looks like they're gonna stagger their products. The announcement, on May 10th of Google I.O. and the announcement of all the products will come then and then the Pixel 7a should go up for actually released I believe that very same day and you should get it a few days later and then you'll be able to should be able to pre-order all the other products that same day as well from the Pixel Fold to the tablet and everything else that they talk about that day um, that's available for, for order but then the release date of some of these products is going to come you know blah 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 so 20th for the tablet 27th for the fold. Next up is a new photo mode coming out to Samsung phones called Double Portrait. And it's coming out because, and we know it's coming out because of on their, their forums, they have a little forum and you can talk to the developers, I believe it's from Samsung members, and someone asked, and kind of complained something the biggest difference between iPhone and Galaxy portraits is the processing of objects at close range. In the case of iPhone out of focus, close up objects are naturally blurred. So more realistic out of focusing is possible. Please improve double portraits too. Oh, and why is 2X zoom uh, image quality worse than cropped up taking 1X with high pixels? And then someone replied saying, hello, I'm in charge of the camera. Double portraits will be applied in the next software update. Thank you. And I have to be honest, I'm not completely sure what double portrait mean is uh, if they're using something specifically within the two lenses if it has to do with the each side of a person's face when to make it the same clearness uh, when you're taking that portrait mode if it has to do with multiple objects in the in the uh, portrait that it'll make them both really really good looking so i'll be honest i'm not 100% and I googled it too and I, I couldn't decipher exactly what double portrait mode means if you do just put in the comments down below but at least we're getting it right um, so thanks for watching your question of the day is what do you think of the Google Pixel tablet is it underpowered is it overpriced is it something right up what, what you're looking for let me know in the comments down below without further ado Let's jump on our Q and A. All right, Jerome Gold says, is the Z Fold 4 overseas, did they get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus? It should be a Gen 1 Plus. Or did they get the Snap Samsung chip? All, uh, they got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus. Everybody got that everywhere in the world for that phone. Um, and did they? Did the Samsung chip wouldn't be a good reason to fold to the Fold 5? So the Fold 5 is gonna get, again, Fold 5 everywhere will get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, no matter where you live. Chris is our next question. How do you know if your battery health is still at 100% on your Samsung phone? Unfortunately, you don't. I don't know of a way to actually check that. You're gonna have some third-party apps that claim to do it, but they won't know. So unlike with the iPhone where you can actually check the battery health, Samsung unfortunately doesn't have something like that that I know of. And our last question from Roland saying, do you think it would be worth going from the Fold 4 to the Pixel Fold? I think it would be. I mean, I think like I've said in past videos, it writes, the Pixel, the Z Fold 4 is wrongs. So you get the bigger outside display, a bigger battery, better cameras. And those are three pain points to me on the Fold 4. So I think, yeah, from the Fold 4, I think it's a really, really compelling upgrade. From the Fold 5, you know, if your only issue is the the battery life and you love the cameras then you know i think the the, the hn2 fold 5 might have better battery life. it might not we'll wait and see uh versus the pixel fold but 
I think that out of all the folding phones coming out recently, the Pixel Fold, honestly, to me, is still the most compelling, exciting one coming out. But just my take, as time goes on, I will definitely let you guys know that answer. Thanks for watching. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. Hashtag question. We'll see you down the road. Peace.